Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Good Food Institute's inaugural symposium on fermentation. Today, we'll explore how fermentation is poised to revolutionize the alternative protein industry. And we're so glad you're joining us. I'm Caroline Bushnell, GFI's Director of Corporate Engagement, and I'll be your host for today's event. For those that aren't yet familiar with the Good Food Institute, GFI is a nonprofit 501c3 that is dedicated to accelerating the shift to a sustainable, healthy, and just food system. The key questions we're working on are two of the biggest questions in food. One, how are we gonna feed almost 10 billion people globally by 2050? And two, how are we gonna do so sustainably, efficiently, and safely while addressing the climate change caused by food production? Well, we believe alternative proteins are a key part of the solution, and fermentation is going to play an increasingly important role in the industry. So we're really excited to dive deep into the subject today. Based on our registrations, we have people here today from over 50 countries across six continents um, and a total of about 2,700 registrants. It's really terrific to see this level of excitement, not just for alternative proteins, but for fermentation specifically. So let's see, we're at about five after the hour now. So I'd say we go ahead and officially kick off today's event. I'm pleased to turn the stage over to GFI's co-founder and executive director, Bruce Friedrich, to tell you a bit more about the event and why we're so excited about the potential of fermentation to accelerate the alternative protein industry and help transform our food system. Bruce? Hey, everybody. Uh, so excited. I share uh, Caroline's enthusiasm to be with everyone today. Uh, welcome to GFI's inaugural symposium on fermentation. Uh, we are delighted that you have joined us as we explore the tremendous potential impact of fermentation on alternative protein development. Plant-based and cultivated meat have been recognized as two primary pillars of the alternative protein industry, but fermentation is emerging as a key alternative protein platform in its own right. New applications of fermentation as a primary source of protein, so think corn, uh, and also as an enabler for plant-based products and cultivated animal products, think about the heme and the Impossible Burger. They show incredible promise for the future of this industry. Fermentation, which uses microbes like microalgae and fungi, it's sustainable and it's versatile. It has excited the world's top investors and meat companies. Bill Gates has invested, Breakthrough Energy Ventures sees the potential for climate mitigation, ADM Capital, JBS, which is the world's largest meat company, is using fermented products in its plant-based line. So fermentation is enabling a new wave of innovation in alternative protein. At GFI, we believe that fermentation's ability to efficiently produce protein is going to be key to feeding the world. It will significantly alleviate global malnutrition. Fermentation is going to enable companies to meet the growing demand for high quality protein at a cost that is lower than that of conventional animal products. Microbes and fermented plant proteins can also provide the sensory experiences and the full nutritional profile of animal products, but without the range of external costs that come with industrial animal production. From massive contributions to climate change, to growing antibiotic resistance and zoonotic diseases. And that's the holy grail. That's how alternative proteins truly realizes its potential. We need products that cost the same or less and that taste the same or better. That's essentially GFI's theory of change. Everything that GFI is doing is focusing on making alternative proteins cost the same or less and taste the same or better. So we have an exciting event planned for you today. It's gonna to cover the primary ways that fermentation is used in alternative proteins, 
It's going to cover sustainability implications, investment trends, opportunities for innovation, and more. We're going to kick off with a presentation by the authors of our Fermentation State of the Industry Report. For anybody who hasn't seen that yet, um, we've got state of the industry reports for plant proteins, for cultivated meat, um, and also for fermentation. And you can see all of those at gfi.org slash industry. So in this first presentation, they're going to walk you through the three primary forms of fermentation used for alternative proteins, the competitive landscape, investment trends, and also regulatory considerations. After that, we're going to dive in with firsthand accounts and discussion from key players in the industry, key startups, and academic experts with five fascinating panel discussions. This symposium, our fermentation state of the industry report, and all of the insights and research that GFI offers are made possible by our incredible family of donors. If you'd like to learn more about GFI, check out our website, which is just gfi.org. If you want to see our strategic plan and some of our accomplishments, go to gfi.org slash plan, gfi.org slash plan. If you want to see our 2019 year in review, check out gfi.org slash 2019 and see what the plan looks like uh, when it's actually effectuated. Uh, you can go to gfi.org to sign up for our bi-weekly newsletter, which covers you know, these industries, fermentation, plant-based, and cultivated. Uh, and if you'd like to receive our monthly highlights, you can email me directly. And my email address is just brucef at gfi.org. If you're interested in supporting more open access events like this one and all of GFI's work to advance the alternative protein ecosystem, we hope you'll visit our website or contact us at the email that's being dropped into the chat right now. I am super excited about today's lineup. Thank you again to all of you for joining us. We are deeply grateful for whatever you're doing to advance alternative proteins. I'm gonna turn the stage back over to Caroline, who's going to review how to get the most out of today's program. Thanks so much.